right, uh, thank you so much. So, hi, like she said, I'm Carly Ho. Uh, I'm, an en I'm a full stack engineer at Click Studios. And uh, I'm here today to talk to you about name validation in, uh, in technology. So let's talk about names. So pretty much the first thing that I told all of you when I got up here was tell you my name. Uh, names are generally one of the first things that we ask for and one of the first things that we offer in conversation as part of getting to know someone. So we talk about names all the time. Names are also a really personal thing. It's one thing to say dislike or have issues with your own name for your own reasons. But having someone, ma someone else mangle your name can range from annoying to genuinely hurtful. So it's important to think about how we validate names as we work to create more inclusive technology. So, uh, so names are obviously really important information. However, names can take a lot of different forms and it's hard to account for all of them. If we want to build validation into our forms, how do we validate names so that we can include everyone and can we? So let's talk about what is a name and how do we define what a name is? So what are some things that we've, we tend to assume about names or things that we've seen, like say web forms, assume about how a name should be formatted? So some things that I've seen, uh, everyone has one first name and one last name. That's pretty common. You generally see first name fields and last name fields. Um, let's see, sometimes I see a name has a minimum of three characters. Uh, you may recall seeing my name on that second slide and why that might be annoying to me personally. <laughs> um, other assumptions, uh, the given name comes first and the family name comes last. Names are composed of letters. Names are composed of letters from the Latin alphabet or can be losslessly translated into letters from the Latin alphabet. Names don't change or only change at a very, at a very few specific points in time. Uh, everyone has one canonical first name, full name. So these assumptions and basically every other assumption that we can make about how a name should be are actually basically wrong. As it turns out, there are not a whole lot of assumptions that you can make about the set of all names. <laughs> what are names? We just don't know. <laughs> so, the form of a name is al different almost everywhere. What people take for granted as being a name anywhere is not, probably not true in the majority of other places around the world and probably not true even within your own country. So in the United States of America, which is where I'm giving this talk, um, you know, we still often assume uh, Western European norms even while we're an incredibly diverse country. Uh, there's still a lot of expectation that names should conform to a certain quote unquote Americanized standard. And this goes back to way before like technology and web forms. So immigrants did and still often do adopt more American names in hopes that assimilating leads to more opportunity. Um, people with names that don't sound European, even today, often find themselves marked as perpetual foreigners, even when they were born here and their parents were born here. I mean, ask me how many times uh, I've heard, so where are you really from? I'm, I'm from Maryland. Uh, <laughs> my dad's from California. Uh, so these expectations, when extended to web forms, they're both really obnoxious and they do cause problems. Uh, I was actually earlier this year um, considering pitching a talk to another conference, but when I went to their registration form, I found that I couldn't register because they were validating for minimum three character last names. So to their credit, they were really graceful about it when I tweeted them about it and did fix their form so now it works. Uh, but I have to wonder about how many people might have just you know, given up. Two letter last names are actually really common even, we, even if they don't seem you know, familiar. So also funny story, um, sometimes I get around those kinds of limitations by adding an exclamation point to my name. So uh, my name is only valid when I'm really excited about it, I guess. <laughs> so basically names are a way to refer to someone and that's pretty much all you can assume about a name. It's, it's something that you could possibly call someone. Uh, it's, it's very basic and it's very vague and that's very kind of disappointing, but that's basically all you can do without making some incorrect premises that lock someone out somewhere. So 
yeah, there's not really a good way to validate like what is a name. So uh, what can we do? Uh, names are not impossible to pin down, but you also want to make sure that you have data that's useful and serves the intended purpose and is you know, friendly to your user. So what can you do about that? So the first thing to think about is why are you asking about names? So when we're gathering name information via, like, say, a, a registration form, the point of a validation is not actually to figure out what is and isn't a name. Uh, the point is actually to get the information that we need to use elsewhere. So sometimes we just want to be able to, say, greet a user in emails or on their account dashboard. Uh, sometimes we need it to respond to a personal communication. Sometimes we need to know what to put on a packing label and so on. So I guess a good first question to ask is, do you really need to ID them by name? Uh, if the information isn't used in any other way other than like cosmetically, and you have other ways of identifying a user uniquely, um, such as like email, you might honestly just be able to drop it. And uh, so if you do need a name or you want to you know, be able to like, be friendly and say like, oh, hello, Carly, thank you for logging in, um, do you need to separate you know, first name and last name with your data? If there's, any, if there's not a reason for you to need, like say, just only the first, like the given name or only the family name or like anything other than the entire unit of the name, uh, you can just replace first name, last name with a single full name field, which means that people can enter their name in a way that feels right to them. And so, for example, well, if you only need one part of a name, such as like say, a personal name, like if you want to be able to say, hi, Carly, in your emails, um, you could consider only collecting that data and labeling it in a way that makes sense to users from pretty much any cultural context, such as, how should we address you, or what's your full formal title, or something like that. And in that case, well, you can let the user help you by telling them what you'll use the name for. If a user knows you want a name for how to address them in emails or for addressing a petition to a congressperson or to mail them a package, that's useful context that will help them enter information that's useful to both of you. Uh, so for example, uh, if you know that some of your users have multiple names that you go by, um, so for example, some people adopt like an English given name when they immigrate or to do business with English speakers, but also retain a different legal name. Your form might need to ask for both of those names if you anticipate situations where both are needed. So you can let them know like which name should we call you by in this situation, or which name should we call you by in this other situation. Um, you should also try and avoid uh, assuming things about say like which part of a, na of a name that is given to you is the surname or family name. So some people have multiple given names, multiple surnames, additional name parts that signify things like gender, generation, marital status, religi religious identity, what town they come from, among other things. Uh, and the world is also not uniform on whether the given name or the family name is written first or how many family names you have. Uh, I know I've heard that, for example, many people with Spanish, uh, like Spanish names coming to the United States generally encounter the issue that only their second family name gets read as their like quote unquote real surname, whereas in most Spanish speaking countries, the first one is often the emphasized one, or depending on, or it depends on the country. Um, in addition, you know, think ahead and make sure that your user interface can, uh, user interface can, can accommodate both long and short names. Um, Twitter, for example, only allows 16 characters in your display name, which is really not very much, even for people with relatively like average size names. Uh, well, it means that, like, say, Twitter doesn't have to do any kind of backflips into making things fit into their user interface or like moving things around. It means that a lot, a large number of people can't enter their you know entire name on Twitter, or you know have to you know shorten their name or replace part of their last name with an emoji or whatever, and that's you know, obviously not ideal. So sometimes there are situations where you can't do anything uh, or your system isn't ideal. Uh, so how do we be compassionate about that? There are a lot of systems where they may not just be able, they just may not be able to process the set of all possible names. 
Some systems are old. Uh, some systems have limited ability to accommodate larger character sets or don't have the ability to escape database inputs um, and therefore don't let you use stuff like spaces or punctuation or hyphens. Um, and they can't you know, redo their system just because it's super old or super huge or unwieldy and they just don't have the money or time. And that's, that's understandable. There's a lot of places that just you know, can't prioritize that right now. Uh, I think we're all familiar with airline systems that tend to just run your entire name together into some unpronounceable mess. But if that's true about your system, don't position it as a problem with the user's name. Their name is their name. It's not invalid. It's, uh, you know, it's just that your system can't actually process it. Uh, so when I was looking for you know, pe other people talking about issues with name validation, I found this um, blog post from a guy named uh, John Graham Cumming, who has a hyphen in his name, um, who also encountered this issue, who said, what they actually mean is our website won't accept the hyphen in your last name, but they don't say that. No, of course not. They decide to shove in my face the claim there's something wrong with my name. If it's your name, it's, it's not wrong. It's just the system can't handle it. So the best thing that you can do in that case is admit your system limitations and your validation methods, uh, such, like, such as like, our system is unable to process last names that contain non-letters. Please re replace them with spaces or something like that. And continue to work on any improvements you make so that, and continue to work on any improvements you can make so that maybe in the future you can actually accept a more diverse set of names. Uh, so yeah, so uh, that's my talk about name validation. Uh, thank you for listening. Any questions? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and I also, I'm going to post these slides to, uh, to Twitter momentarily. I also, on the last slide, have my list of, uh, like my sort of bibliography of uh, other works that I read for this talk, uh, which will contain links to other sites. So if you want to do further reading, uh, there's that for you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you.